Tennessee could be the first state to bring changes to TenCare and Medicare, and residents in our area have something to say about that. Good evening, and thank you for joining us. I'm Kim Chapman. And I'm Josh Rowe. Governor Bill Lee's block grant proposal would put billions of dollars in the hands of the state. Bliss segment joins us to explain the block grant and how people in Chattanooga feel about what could happen. This room at the Chattanooga Public Library is starting to thin out, but earlier today it was packed with people, many of which say they don't like the block grant proposal. These dedications keep me alive. This is giving me an opportunity to live out the rest of my life with some pride. It is demoralizing and dehumanizing to wake up every day and hope nothing happens. Dozens of TenCare patients share emotional testimony, including Rosalie Howes, whose son Hiram suffered a stroke in utero. Hiram's life depends on TenCare. The eight-year-old suffers seizures, severe brain damage, and hydrocephalus, where fluid builds on the brain. Our mornings start at 5 a.m. doing breathing treatments and medications to get him going for the day. Howes says her family would be bankrupt if they had to cover Hiram's medical expenses on their own. After reading the draft version of the amendment to TenCare. House is worried the new proposal will limit the amount of life-saving supplies her son receives, specifically citing a section that says the state wants to exclude covering high-cost prescriptions. Her son's medications cost roughly $2,000 every month. This prescription policy would be devastating for a family like mine. Here's how the Medicaid to block grant proposal would affect the 1.4 million Tennesseans on Medicaid, also known as TenCare. The federal government would send Tennessee a lump sum of $8 billion. Then the state can change the quote amount, duration and scope of coverage, effectively cutting federal oversight. Governor Lee hopes this will save the state money. It'll be a win for Tennessee and ultimately it'll be a win for the country. If Tennessee doesn't spend all the money it's given, it splits the savings with the federal government. If the state runs out of the funds, thanks to new enrollees or another health crisis, then the state would get to decide what it covers. Representative Yusuf Hakim is one Tennessee lawmaker who opposes these changes, in part because he's worried about the uncertainty of this new program. Concerning to me that we understand clearly what definitions are, uh, how those savings, uh, proposed savings will be spent, and uh, uh, who's making those decisions? This was the fifth and final meeting held across the state of Tennessee. Now, Representative Hakeem says he's going to take the concerns that were expressed here today and try to relay them to Governor Lee. Reporting in Chattanooga, I'm Bliss Segment. And now, according to Mayor Andy Burke's tweet, citing the Census Bureau, more than 20,000 Chattanoogans do not have health insurance. Burke argues under this proposal, even more people could be at risk of losing coverage. And one man at today's meeting supports the 10 care changes. He says that he's encouraging people to rely on faith-based communities to fill in coverage gaps.